I can recommend this solar heater for heating pool water, and it is a cheap variant of these unglazed solar collectors, and the construction cost of our variant is several dozen times cheaper. In addition, our solar heater can be interesting for large solar stations which are similar to this American station for the initial stage of heating 600 cubic meters of water per day. Now I recall the cost of heat of our solar heaters, and it depends on the region and the temperature of the heating, and we can see that economic sense recommends heating the water by our heaters to a temperature of 40 or 680 degrees Celsius and then this water is heated to the required temperature by a boiler or more expensive solar collectors. And we can install our cheap solar heaters here between the rows, where the short summer shadows of the expensive collectors do not cover them. In addition, our solar heater can be interesting for large solar stations on horizontal roofs, but I hope that in the future I will find more interesting types of solar heaters for horizontal roofs and describe them in my new videos. This is one of my experiments when this hose gives several times more water than the discharge of the water from the heater through this hose, and therefore the volume of water inside the heater increases. This increases the height of our heater, and therefore the water discharge from the heater increases. And it is obvious that the height of our heater will increase until the water discharge becomes equal to its recharge. Thus, we can change the height of the water and the heater through changing the power of our pump or through periods of its operation, and later I will explain where it might be needed. This is situation a few hours after the pump is turned off, and we see that the height of the water has stabilized at a level of about 1 cm. But I can increase or decrease this minimum level of 1 cm through changing the set of these pieces of wood and this will change the location of this tube. This is situation after a strong wind, when the water level was 1 cm. That is why windy regions may require increasing the minimum water height to 2 or 3 cm, or we must somehow fix the edges of the film. But on the other hand, our heater has the maximum efficiency if the height of the water is about 1 cm, and increasing the height of the water reduces the efficiency of its heating by solar radiation. In addition, the height of the water more than a few centimeters may require increasing its flow through the heater or mixing the water, similar to this of my experiment with this pump. This is my reminder that traditional solar collectors require expensive and labor-intensive fixation on the ground or roof. At the same time, our solar heater has no fixation, and a strong wind is not a problem due to the horizontal position of the heater and due to the large weight of its water. In addition, our solar heaters can be quickly assembled and disassembled, and my other video describes the technology of their installation. That is why we can remove them in the fall and install them in the spring, and this makes sense, as this increases the lifespan of our heaters, and they can work normally in winter only if they are located south of 20 or 40 degrees north latitude. These features of our heaters can be useful for their installation on horizontal roofs, because we will not damage the hermetic roof covering with the fixation, and our roof will not be filled with the heaters until April, and this is good for its repair. Economic Sense recommends the film lifespan of about one year for countries with cheap labor and several years for countries with expensive labor, but less than one year for the cases where we use that idea of removing our solar heaters in autumn, and we will install new films in the spring in these cases. And we can notice that our film is very cheap, and its replacement is easy and fast, and old films are sold to companies which use them for the production of recycled polyethylene. I installed this film in August, and it went through Ukrainian winter with its frosts to 20 degrees Celsius below zero, and it continues to work now in April. But I think that it will die in a few months, and it is the cheapest film of recycled low-density polyethylene with a thickness of about 100 microns. Obviously, if we want to increase the lifespan of the film, we need to buy a film of a more expensive virgin polyethylene with a thickness of up to 200 or 400 microns. In addition, we can use more expensive black films of high-density polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, rubber or Teflon.
but we must understand that the lifetime of our film may be less due to hail or other damages, and now I will throw these nuts and ice pieces of my refrigerator. And it turned out that they did not damage my thin cheap film, but the height of their fall was only a few meters, and I predict that a real big hail will destroy a cheap film. And it is interesting to note that the water absorbs the power of their blows. This is another of my experiments, and now I am doing different damages of the film to demonstrate that the film can work with these damages. But if the film has a lot of these damages, then I recommend installing a new film. This is the next day, and we see that the water does not go through these damages. And I must knock on the film so that water leaks appear. Now I want to see damages to the film due to the cat's claws, but unfortunately the cat did not want to go to my film. Perhaps, due to the fact that the film is hot now. And I once saw that a small dog put its front paws on the film, but its claws did not give any damage. In addition, I often saw that the morning dew can gather in puddles on the film, and birds peck them, but their claws and beaks have never damaged my thin film with a thickness of about 100 microns. But that was Ukrainian birds, and perhaps birds of other regions will be bigger and stronger. That is why I recommend increasing the film thickness. This is the situation after rain, and it is obvious that we must take a brush or a rag to push this water off the black surface of the heater, and this water will go away together with the dirt. The ideal removal of the water is unnecessary, because the solar radiation will quickly dry out the remaining water on our black surface. Now I show traditional methods of cleaning solar panels, but unfortunately, we can use similar methods only in the case of large solar stations. The need for this maintenance is one of the reasons for my search for other types of solar heaters which will not require removing rainwater and washing. This is my first experiment which shows that removing water can be less labor intensive for the case of large solar stations, and now I will increase the height of the heater. And we can see that the heater surface becomes more rounded, and therefore the water gradually leaves the surface. Now the height of the heater is the maximum, but the water did not completely leave the black surface. This is the situation after I quickly push water to the ground with a rag, and then I will wait for the drying of the moisture. And this is my heater after one hour of cold cloudy weather, and we can see that its surface is very clean. This is another similar experiment. But I gave the heater this high water level before the rain, and we can see that our black surface is covered with small puddles now. This is the situation after the sun dried the water, and we can see that the surface has a bit of dirt on the location of those puddles, but this dirt reduces the efficiency of the heater by only 1 or 2 percent. Obviously, Further we will reduce the height of the heater to a few centimeters, and it will get the ability to heat water with good efficiency. Now I show how I once got up early in the morning to do the next experiment, and this is water which was poured in the evening. And it is obvious that it has a temperature of the ambient air, but this warm water was poured a few minutes ago and its temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. And then I covered them with a black film, and now we will observe the dew which appeared on the film above the first water during two hours. It is very important, because I have a hypothesis that the morning dew is the main cause of the dirt on our black surface, as it collects dust from the air. And we can see that the film over our second water has no dew. Thus, 
we will not receive the morning dew and our heaters will remain clean if the warm water circulates through the heaters starting in the morning from 3 or 5 o'clock, and this technical solution can be easily implemented in the case of large solar stations, and later I will demonstrate this with the example of this American station. Now I will show the technology of removing these air bubbles. Obviously. The bubbles will reduce the efficiency of our solar heaters, because the heat from the black film will not go to the water through air layer. And we can see that removing bubbles is a very easy and quick operation, but we can abandon this operation if we find all causes of the appearance of the bubbles and eliminate these causes. For example, the bubbles may appear due to air which comes out of this hose along with water. That is why I recommend installing the water inlet tube parallel to this wall, and the air will escape through this gap. If the solar heaters are above our pool or heat storage, our pump takes water from the pool and directs it into the heaters, and the heated water runs into the pool without a pump. This is the scheme of this technical solution, and this is our pool or heat storage. This is a more difficult case when the heaters are below the water level of our pool or heat storage, and we can use an electromagnetic valve here, and the water runs to the heaters via it without a pump, and then the water runs into this tank, and this pump returns it to our storage. And it can be a pump of this type, or it can be a traditional pump outside the tank but with this cheap float switch. But I must warn that I did not do experiments with these schemes, and now I describe only my ideas, and we can replace this valve by a second pump but I think we should add this cheap non-return valve which automatically passes ambient air inside pipes when the pump does not work. If our heaters must direct their water via a heat exchanger, and not in heat storages, we can use this scheme when this pump takes the water through this hose, and then the pump must direct the water to our heat exchanger. And then the water returns into the solar heater through such hose. But I used another design of the water outlet in this experiment, and now I show this design. I remind you that the main design of the water outlet was described in my other video on our solar heater. This is my idea of a serial connection of a large number of our solar heaters, and the heaters have a different height of location according to terrain, and we give the water to the most upper heater, and the water runs to the lower heaters without a pump, and we take the heated water from the lowest heaters. This American solar station was built for a turkey meat plant, and this plant requires about 600 cubic meters of clean water every day with a temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius, and the heating of the water begins with these solar collectors which heat the water to a temperature of 30 or 40 degrees, and then the water is heated to 60 degrees by a propane boiler. So, we can replace these expensive solar collectors by our cheap heaters, and we can use this scheme with these four heat storages. The water of this heat storage moves through our heaters in the morning, but then they switch to heating the water of this storage, and then they heat the water of this warmest storage around noon. Then, the decrease in the height of the sun leads to the fact that our solar heaters are losing the ability to produce heat of this high temperature, and so they begin to heat the water of this storage, and then they heat this storage until the evening when they begin to heat the water of this coldest storage until the moment when the ambient air becomes colder than the water of the storage. Then the circulation of the water of this storage through the heaters starts in the second half of the night, and this is done to prevent the appearance of dew on the surface of the heaters, and I described this effect a few minutes ago. And, obviously, this circulation continues until the solar heaters are able to give the heat of this temperature in the morning. These heat exchangers alternately transmit the heat of these three storages to the cold water which goes through this pipe, and we can notice that harmful substances of the water of our heaters and storages are not transferred to the clean water which will be used for the food production. Then this propane boiler heats the clean water to a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, 
But if we want to use our cheap solar heaters along with expensive solar collectors, then the heat storage of the expensive collector should have the highest temperature and their heat exchanger should be here. I remind you that the first video about this solar heater is on my YouTube channel, and it describes manufacture and installation of the heater and its water outlet, the construction cost of the heater and its heat production.